Dear friends, good afternoon and welcome to the second live surgery of this ITI week. Today our patient is a female of 48 years of age. She is in good systemic health and non-smoker and she has been referred to us for the replacement of the missing 1-6 which has been missing for many years. Looking at the comb beam CT examination we can see that there is a small reduction of the width of the alveolar ridge but there seems to be not much loss of the alveolar ridge height. On the contrary we have a very extensive sinus pneumatization so you can see the sinus has expanded to almost cover all the possible height of the alveolar ridge and uh, in this case uh, sinus augmentation with the lateral window technique is indicated. Looking at the morphology of the sinus floor, we see that it is free of any complications and structures like septa or other anomalies, and there is a very thin cortical bone wall in the front of the sinus. At the same time, there is some thickening of uh, the membrane towards the coronal part of the sinus, which is in many cases a, a common finding. Looking a bit closer, trying to identify the potential anatomical implications, we see that uh, the only site where actually the intraosseous branch of the artery is visible is very high up and only in the part of the premolar canine premolar region. When we're looking at the molar area that we will be operating right now, there seems to be really no indication of any part of the anastomosis of the artery entering the bony wall. So we do not expect any particular anatomic difficulties in this case. Our plan is to continue with uh, osteotomy with a piezoelectric uh, cutting tips and in the beginning we will use the straight diamond coated cutting tips. We can generate the initial uh, shape of our window which we will finalize afterwards with a round shaped diamond tip. Now once the window has been detached and mobilized we will continue with an initial membrane elevation with the piezoelectric tips and then finalize the elevation with the hand instruments. Once the membrane is mobile enough then we will fill the space created with uh, BIOS particles and we will cover and close the operated area. So our aim will be to create a lateral window of a trapezoid shape with a, a small basis on the floor of the sinus and a slightly wider upper margin of the window. Then uh, we will use some local anatomy to mark our entry points and the intention is to have a window which is approximately 8 millimeters in the height that should give us very good access almost all the way to the lateral walls of the area that we're going to augment which are defined by the roots of the neighboring teeth and that will give us the possibility to regenerate approximately between 8 and uh, 10 to 12 millimeters of height within the sinus. So action time and let's continue the discussion from the operating theater. See you soon. And now we're moving on with uh, the first incision. I will start with a mid crystal. And continue intracellular. I will need to finalize this uh, mesial part of the incision with a different blade just to make sure I have completed all the way through. Again, I'm using the periodome quite frequently for this type of incisions. Here is no longer the aesthetic zone. 
but nevertheless I think there's no harm to try to be as gentle as possible now I have mobilized already one corner of the papilla I need the flap here and this is where I will have my release incision this is the round papilla elevator it gives you a very good grip under the papilla so you can actually detach it without traumatizing the tip and once I have a grip on the bone I can actually continue with my periosteal elevator sometimes starting from a mesial direction towards the distal with gentle distal movement and pressure we're not going to place an implant most likely today so I do not need to detach my palatal flap right now can you ask the patient to move a little bit more to the left please I think yes thank you once I have a good grip on the bone I will continue with my release incision again the same principle the first incision is 90 degrees against the tooth surface so that I create this flat to flat and from this point onwards I can continue just extending this apically suction please there now this tip is very important because this tiny little tip if it's too thin it will necrotize after we suture the flap so we want to bring it flat to flat here and as thick as possible okay I will have to see how much will be enough for my release incision and most likely I will need to have a small release at the distal side suction there please now I'll have to place my distal release probably on the distal third of the buccal surface not exactly around the the corner there and now we start to get a good control of the area that we are going to access unfortunately the mouth opening is not very favorable and here we have some small attachment of the soft tissue so I can see there is almost a small fenestration of the sinus or yes I can I can see the membrane a little bit shining through this tiny little fenestration so it's almost a self-exposed now I need a little bit more here I will have to extend slightly our mesial incision and to do that I need to have a better control of the tissues to see exactly where we're cutting can they hear me Can they still hear me? Yeah. Yes, can you hear us? Oi, oi, oi. Yes, thank you, I can hear you. Okay. Good. So, let's see, I think now I have exposed the bone I need. I would try to start with this exposure without really reflecting more. 
I think that gives me enough control. And if I have to, I might need to modify slightly. Do we have the um, other retractor? Yes. Let's try this retractor. Now, this is one of the most tricky retractors because once you open your window, it can interfere. Yes, very good. So, suction, please. Okay. Now, we are dealing with a very thin sinus floor. So, my first, the diamond cut, which is uh, the most aggressive one, I might have to use very little of it. Is it a, low, a highest intensity? So I need you a little bit more distal there. Good. I need to mark my entry line and I'm trying to follow a little bit the anatomy. And you see that already at this stage I'm getting very close. Uh, so, yes. so here I'm going to... need to mark the upper margin of my window so here I will have to ask you to pull a little bit more I'm having a design of a minimalistic window already and because on the coronal part of my window I think that I'm getting quite close I will now switch to the round tip which uh, widens my osteotomy and it's also a little bit more uh, 
sensitive.